Hi gang, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally things that'd be good for a Bradley. Today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of GLP's Telegraph Hill. You may know, if you've been paying attention to the channel, that I am going through the final phases of my Replace Elizabethan series. I had narrowed it down to three GLP's blends. Number one was GLP's Stratford. Number two, GLP's Telegraph Hill. Number three, GLP's Fillmore. I picked those three because they were all vapors. They were all ones that I thought were pretty decent when I first reviewed them. Um, American made, so they're easy for me to get here in the US. And they were all produced before 2007, so we don't have to worry about those deeming regulations. I think Telegraph Hill was 2004. I believe, off the top of my head. So I already did my deep dive into Stratford and was actually kind of shocked that even though that was the one I had liked the least, I liked it originally, but out of those three, the one I liked the least, I ended up liking it the most after having smoked two or three tins. Um, maybe something similar is happening with Telegraph Hill. You will have to check the video. It will be posting this Wednesday. Um, it's been a very interesting little experiment for me. I've been drawing some conclusions which I did not expect to draw, and uh, I don't know. I think it's put a whole different perspective on things we like and the reasons we like them. It's pretty interesting. It's been, it's been a, growing, a growing experience for me. So look forward to that. We have some other things coming up on the channel. Um, I may be getting a pipe to review, which I've never really done on the channel before. In fact, yesterday, or not yesterday, last week during Sunday Smoke, I sort of jokingly mentioned in response to an Ask Stuff and Things comment about Briarworks pipes. And I was like, hey, I, I would love to review one if they send me one for free. Hey, someone tell them. Uh, someone did. The Scott, the person who had sent me that question, I guess got in touch with Briarworks, uh, told them about the video. They watched the video. And Pete from Briarworks got in touch with me, so I may be getting a pipe from them to review at some point. I feel kind of guilty for having said that, but screw it. Maybe I should just start demanding things all the time. It works out for everybody because they get some free publicity. I get a pipe, um, which I may or may not like. We'll see. I will be quite honest in my review, but uh, I've always kind of... Re avoided reviewing pipes in the past because I felt like even though you can sort of generally talk about the quality of a certain manufacturer's work or you pick a certain line, like let's say you're looking at a Peterson just standard system pipe, you can say, okay, it seems to be of this quality, but you don't know for sure that the pipe you have is going to exactly match up to the pipe someone else has. Because they're all unique, they're all different. It's not the same as reviewing a film or a book or something where someone's going to give it basically the same experience. So I always kind of avoided those reviews, but I think judging by the fact that most of the Briarworks pipes seem to be fairly, it seems like a nice sort of production line kind of pipe. So I think they'll be pretty consistent, I guess. But I don't know exactly when that's going to be happening. Um, after speaking to Pete, Pete, I think they have to make me one because they didn't have a billiard in at the time. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. And you can look forward to that on the channel coming up pretty soon. Next, we have a segment I would like to call Netflix Picks, which I think I've done on the channel before. I don't have a theme song. I don't have anything for it. I should have a bumper or something that I can play beforehand, but it's something I've done every once in a great while where I recommend something on Netflix that you should watch. And someone recently, I don't know, a few weeks ago or something on Sunday Smoke said that I should do it again. And I hadn't really been watching anything on Netflix lately. Uh, I've been watching a lot of anime on Crunchyroll, but uh, I recently watched a series. And actually, before I get to my recommendation, I started watching something else. I watched this first ser series that I'll tell you about on Netflix. And then I started watching something on Amazon Prime and I don't know why I'm watching it because I get angry pretty much every time I do, but it's something called River Monsters where this crazy British man named Jeremy Wade goes to various rivers or freshwater bodies of water uh, throughout the world and he catches monsters. 
So there's one I watched where he was catching giant Nile perch, one where he caught some huge river stingray or river ray or something in India, um, one where he was catching bull sharks that had traveled up into freshwater streams. And it makes me so angry every time I watch it because it's one of those shows, I never really watch reality shows, I never really have watched reality shows, but the things I always hated about them were how fake and manufactured they are, where they try to manufacture this drama. And this, this show is so much like that. Like every, even the way it's edited drives me crazy. So he'll be talking about, I'm investigating this particular case. He's not investigating any case. He's a dude on a show. They sent him on location and they're filming things. But he'll be pretending to look through like clippings and pictures that have obviously been printed up by a, a PA and given to him. And they'll have these, these super close ups like a, a camera view where it's just like his eyebrow as it's furrowed and then suddenly it's like right on his ear and then I, I don't know the the, sh the shots are just really irritating the cuts are really annoying and he's there like pondering this fish and drawing it out like I wonder what it looks like and then he's always talking about how this could be the most dangerous case I've ever been it's like no it's not it's not dangerous at all you're on TV, they have insurance out on you. If you had to do anything dangerous, they wouldn't let you because of the insurance. I don't know, so it drives me insane, but I just keep watching it for some reason. I don't know why. But let me get, that isn't my recommendation. Let me get to the actual Netflix show that I wanted to talk to you about. And it is called The Haunting of Hill House, which some of you may have heard about. Um, I'm not a huge horror guy because often, I, I can't be frightened by films or series. It's pretty much impossible. I can't think of a single movie that has ever actually frightened me. I think the reason being, uh, it's multifaceted, but for one thing, I'm pretty calm. I'm not someone prone to anxiety or fright in general. Um, I know that what I'm watching is not real. So why would I be frightened by something that I know isn't actually happening? I don't, that's one of those weird disconnects I have with other humans who talk about like, oh, I can't watch that, it's too scary. I'm like, what? I, what, what do you mean? Like, I don't get that. I don't understand that at all. You know it's fake. You know it's not actually happening. So why would that frighten you? And it's one thing, I can watch something that's really sad and I can feel some sadness, I guess, for the characters, even though I know it's fake, but it can put me in mind of other things or I can sort of, I can empathize with the idea and not even pretend that the character is actually going through it, but I can understand as a concept. But with a horror movie, I don't know, I just, it doesn't work. But I still enjoy trying to be frightened by horror movies occasionally, so I like to watch them every once in a while. And sometimes there's some really cool imagery and at least something that, even if it's not frightening, could be kind of unsettling and like, ooh, that was weird, that was creepy. Um, and this series does a pretty good job of having some really, really interesting imagery. And even though occasionally the dialogue seems super I just graduated from USC and I'm trying to write a screenplay kind of dialogue where just normal humans do not talk that way and sometimes it would sort of take me out of it. Um, and some of the acting isn't always amazing, but in general, it's very effective at doing what it wants to do. And it's basically a 10 episode series, very loosely based on the novel, uh, The Haunting of Hill House. I think like extremely loosely based. Um, and it basically follows a family who had moved into a giant mansion and basically the mother and father would move into a house, fix the house up and then flip the house and they would move into another house. And they have five children um, and it takes place in 1992 and in 2018. So there are flashbacks to the 90s and flashbacks or flash forwards or not a flash, it's, it's recent in October, I think it's supposed to take place in 2018. And basically some paranormal things happen in this house. There is some tragedy that occurs and each episode follows one of the family members and you see this intertwining narrative start to develop and you see it from different perspectives and it's really well done and I quite liked it. I haven't binged a show in a long time but I watched 10 episodes within like three or four days or something. So very quickly, like I said, there were a few things, I'm trying to remember a particular line of dialogue where it was like, uh, 
you got one foot on thin ice and the other one, what was it? It was so obnoxious. It's like you've got one, one, one foot on thin ice and the other one on a roller skate or something like that. Like supposedly trying to say that someone was in a very precarious position. It's like nobody would ever say that. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. There were several things like that within the show, but <clears throat> in general, very well done. Um, and I would rec re recommend, I would recommend you check it out on Netflix. That was Netflix picks. Seahawks are playing today or tomorrow as of when I'm recording this. They are playing the Detroit Lions in Detroit. They got a pretty good chance. Um, I'm still not totally sure what's going to happen with the Seahawks. They have some tough games coming up, but I don't know. My initial prediction of 8-8, eight and eight, maybe they'll be a little better than that. I think they may actually have a chance of being a wild card, uh, being a team that has a chance at a wild card spot. So we'll see. Um, it's good, I guess, for those of you who hate me talking about football, that they had a bye last week, so there's no game to talk about, and the game hasn't occurred yet uh, as of when I'm recording this, so you don't have to worry about me blathering on about that. <sighs> the Seahawks. And now, some of you who follow the Stuff and Things Plays channel may be wondering what's next for the channel, what's going on. You may have seen me attempting to complete the game Cuphead, which is an amazing, beautiful game, uh, completely hand-drawn, hand-animated game in the style of 1930s Max Fleischer cartoons. Um, really difficult, and I had done some of the game over a year ago, now I was trying to finish the game, but I was having these horrible frame rate problems that have nothing to do with my rig. It's something to do with the game and the way it is interacting with my rig, I guess. And I could not solve that problem. So some of you were wondering if I can't finish Cuphead and if the frame rate issues pre prevent me from finishing it, which they are preventing me from finishing it, what am I gonna do next? Well, I did something. I did something that I shouldn't have done, especially considering how much money I've had to spend recently. I had my vehicle issues and all that jazz. But I went out and did something dumb. And I got this. I got a PS4 Pro with Red Dead Redemption 2 bundled in. Um, I resisted so long getting a modern console. I have a PC, which is really nice, and I have a Nintendo Switch, but I resisted getting an Xbox One and a PS4 because I was like, screw that. I have a beautiful gaming PC, I wanna play on that, and Nintendo is just is Nintendo, and I've always loved Nintendo, so I wanted to have their console. But with these, with Microsoft and PlayStation, even though some of them, uh, my, obviously Sony way more than uh, Microsoft has some exclusives on their console, for the most part, I was like, I can get the same experience on PC. But Rockstar, the game developer who did Red Dead Redemption 2, who knows when they're gonna release this game for PC. It could be a year, it could be a year and a half, it could be never. And even though I thought, you know, I'll just wait until it's on PC, I decided that I would go insane if I had to do that because everyone who talks about video games is talking about this video game and it would be impossible for me to avoid getting the entire story spoiled and I don't know, I just, I wanted to play the damn thing. And so I thought, oh, I'll just buy a PS Slim. But then with this bundle, it was basically $40 more to get this bundle, to get the PS4 Pro and a game than it would have been to get the Slim and the game. So I did it. I've got a PS4 Pro now, um, and I've started playing Red Dead Redemption 2. For those of you who don't know about the game, the original Red Dead Redemption, well, I guess there was Red Dead Revolver too, but I never played that. But Red Dead Redemption came out in 2010, I think or maybe 2011, I think 2010. It was a Rockstar game. They make the Grand Theft Auto series, and it was a very cool game that took place in the American West in 1911, basically as that era was ending. And it was about a former outlaw who was trying to go straight, who gets swept back into that world when the government forces him to hunt down the members of his old gang and take them out. And it was a really great narrative, a really great game, an open world game, um, one of my favorite games of all time, and so this game has been in production for a very long time. Um, Rockstar makes very good games for the most part, really good open world games, and I've been seeing previews. 
It just looked gorgeous. The environments, this one is a prequel. It actually takes place in 1899 as the outlaw era is ending and I just had to play it. And so I've started recording it for the channel and that's the next series on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. In fact, let me put just a little clip of some of the gameplay. So those of you who may not know anything about the game, those of you who may not have any interest in video games, just take a little look at this clip and see what you think. I guess we're heading back to camp. Me. Shut up. You better shut your mouth, you little shit, or I will shut it for you. That's right. Because I will break every bone in your body. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Not one more goddamn word. Am I clear? Okay. Okay. That's two bones right there. <laughs> I'm going to break your dick bone. You know that humans are one of the few mammals without dick bones? A lot of humans have dick bones. Or not humans. A lot of mammals have dick bones. But great apes don't. Humans don't. Dogs have penis bones. Whales have penis bones. You're lucky you don't have a penis bone, because then you could break your penis bone, and then you'd have to put your penis in a cast. And that would be inconvenient. Blow that train! Gentlemen, it's time. Good luck, all of you. You all know what to do. Vaguely. Uh oh! <clears throat> oh you have got to be kidding me! Where did you find that moron? You said it was fine. Was my fault. Come on! You're pathetic. You know that? Did I just say Dutch was pathetic? Jump on the train. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Jump! Oh! Schniz! Uh, who who got left behind? Was that Javier? Javier? Why do I keep saying Javai? Javier. Hey, down here. Yeah, yeah. Grab Lenny. Oh, pull. Come on, Lenny. All right. Jump. Can I jump? Apparently not. Oh, don't just kill people! You just stabbed him in the fucking neck! I don't... You don't need to kill people. Shut up, Lenny. Well, there you go. That was quite a clip. I have no idea which clip I put in there, but I hope it was good. I hope it was interesting, and I hope it makes you want to watch the series on Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Stuff Things Plays channel. But... It is now time for Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Smoke, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer it. The first one comes from Big Fella, 1983, oh, 19839, um, at Daniel. Now, wait a minute. What? So, okay, he's got a bunch of numbers. At Daniel with another L, 552-30619, and he's asking for a Donald Trump or Scottish voice. We've already established the fact that I can't do Donald Trump. I can barely do Scottish, but we'll try. <coughs> Have you ever tried GLP's Virginia Cream? You need to try it. I checked your videos, and this is one you have not tried. Also, do you know anything about Stanwell pipes? Um... Virginia cream is an aromatic and I think it has like bourbon and vanilla as toppings and I don't think I would like it. So I probably won't review it. Stanwell pipes I have never owned, but I have I've handled them in my very own hand and I thought they look cool. They definitely make um, some really nice pipes. I should get one at some point and I probably will. Next question from C.W. Piperman at C. Piperman. He says... Is he asking for a voice here? Uh, no, he is not. So I will use the Bradley voice. <clears throat> I'd never smoked anything in my life before embarking on my pipe journey. After watching your vids, I decided to take the plunge, and I'm glad I did. Sadly, my friends and relatives would be completely aghast if they knew. 
Have you dealt with this? Um, so you're worried about your friends and or relatives disapproving of your decision to smoke pipe. I have not really dealt with that. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with your own attitude towards others and the way you present yourself and the things you enjoy. If you act furtive and shameful about things, then other people will probably start feeling that way about the things you do. But if you're just open and brazen, like, this is what I do, this is what I like, I don't think that most people will be able to hold that against you, even if they disapprove of it. If, if you're ashamed of something, then don't do it. So, and I'm not saying I, I'm not saying that I think you're ashamed of smoking a pipe, but if you're worried about what other people think, and if it's something that affects you that much, then you probably shouldn't do that thing. Or just have the confidence in yourself to be, I'm doing this. I like it. And I think you will find that most people will respond to that. It's kind of like, if you do something that you don't intend to be negative or hurtful towards somebody, but perhaps it could be interpreted that way. I don't know if I can give a good example here or if I can explain this properly. But if you act guilty, then people may decide that something you have done was wrong. But if you act confident and I guess sort of brazen, then you often can have that carry you through the situation. I'm not saying this like, here's advice for you to get away with things if you've actually done something wrong. But maybe, maybe you didn't do anything wrong, but it could be interpreted that way from a different viewpoint. If you're worried about that and that gets in your head, and then you start behaving in a sort of, sort of guilty or furtive way, then people respond to that. But if you're just like, hey, no, it's fine. That, that makes a difference. It's like a little kid. Okay, here's, here's my last horrible example. Uh, there have been times where like as a, as a younger man, I had to babysit my little brother. And little kids are always smacking into things, hurting themselves. One thing I always noticed is if my little brother smacked his head on something, and if, if I was like, oh my God, are you okay? He would think about it for a minute, and then he would freak out and start screaming. But if I made a joke out of it, it was like, oh, he might sniffle a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, but if I was just like, hey, what's going on? Whoa, whoa, and distract him a little bit, he'd be fine. So people feed off the energy you give them. And I'm not talking about that in some weird, like new agey way. I just mean it's, it's an emotional response to the way you behave. So there you go. That was a very long response, way longer than it needed to be. Man, what's with what's, what's the numbers? This is at Tyler 9442187. He's requesting an old man voice. <clears throat> I know that aromatics are not your cup of tea, but have you ever tried any blends with deer tongue, which have somewhat of an aromatic quality, but it's not of an added topping, it's from the deer tongue itself. <clears throat> um, I have had something with deer tongue, I swear, I can't think of what it was. Does 1792 Flake have deer tongue in it by Gawith? It's been so long since I had it. Um, I didn't have a whole tin of it, and I didn't really like it that much. I'll have to remember or look into, or remind myself to look into whether or not uh, 1792 Flake had deer tongue in it. But yeah, I know it's supposed to taste very odd. Um, some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it ghosts their pipes like crazy. But I should look into uh, actually getting a blend that has a copious amount so I can really taste it well. This next one is from John Smith at Flemhead. He I said, need to do a voice where it sounds as though I just like drank a gallon of milk and ate a block of cheese, but <clears throat> I don't know if I can do that. <clears throat> I'm just starting to smoke pipes again after 50 years. <clears throat> I have some pipes with filters. What is a filter's real use? Ah, I find that they take away a great deal of flavor and... Uh, <coughs> what else am I smoking for if not flavor? I can go to a light blend for smoothness. Um, well, John Smith, or at Flemhead, I tend to agree with you. There are people who swear by pipe filters. I have never used them because I do feel that they take away some of the flavor from the blend and since I am not inhaling 
I don't think that they're very necessary. Some people will still say, I mean, obviously there is smoke coming out of your pipe. If you are in an enclosed environment, you're going to inhale some of it incidentally. And so maybe a filter in between the stem and the outer air, but more smoke is coming out of the bowl than would be coming out of the stem anyway. Um, obviously you're taking some out and you're blowing it into the air, whatever, but I don't think it matters that much. I always felt, and I could be wrong, and in fact, I think some people have told me I was wrong, I have always felt that a lot of the filter use came from places like Germany, Northern Europe. A lot of guys seem to use filters there, and I think that a lot more people inhale there, inhale their pipes, than do here. Um, and I'm sure I'll have tons of people saying that's absolutely not true, but that was kind of the impression that I got. So if I were inhaling a pipe, maybe a filter would be something I'd look into, but since I don't, I think it just kind of robs you of the flavor. All right, this next one is from John, or no, I just did John Smith. This is from Daniel Jack Svanholm. He says, <clears throat> Why not review some of Rattray's tobaccos? They used to be quite legendary in Denmark, partly due to their scarcity. Oh shit, Denmark. I wasn't trying to do like a Danish voice. Since production was taken over by Kohos and Kop, that is no longer the case. Um, Rattray's, Rattray's, Rattray's. I thought I did. No, I haven't. I guess I haven't. Didn't I do red? No. I know that I have considered doing retrays many, many times, and I know I will get to them at some point. I don't know why I haven't, but you know, there's a very long queue. And I'm sure I'll get to them eventually. This next one is from Terry Everett at Bird Creator. He says, uh, oh, he's following up on his question about the pipe placebo effect. When you get a very expensive pipe, why does it seem, is it really smoking better than, well, I'm really jerking around here. Is it really smoking better than other pipes that are maybe of uh, a cheaper, a cheaper quality? Other pipes that are cheaper or is it partly a placebo effect? And he says, I think the cost versus not causing any harm to the pipe equal it, or equals sipping gent gently and all around carefulness, which in turn gives an enhanced tobacco and pipe smoke like a fine wine. Um, so basically saying, the cost and then perhaps you treat the pipe more gently so you're smoking it more carefully and sipping it more carefully. I can only speak for myself, but I don't do that. I smoke all my pipes exactly the same way, so I don't think that has any effect for me. It may have some effect for you. This is from Bird at Fire Sheba. He says, how's your sciatica been lately? Cheers. Um, good lately. Knock on fake wood. Um, it's just one of those things that's always lurking in the background. You never know when it's going to pounce out, but so far so good for a while now. Uh, Scott Robert Collins at 1SRC Photo 1. He is the man who got in contact with Briar Works, so thanks Scott. Appreciate that. He has a question though. He says, between your top three briars, the Dunhill LB, the Savinelli Corallo di Mare, and the Castello Sea Rock 55, what characteristics of each makes them as good as they are? And do they favor certain styles of tobacco? What is different about them aside from shape and make? As an aside, I have just discovered your Zelda series and seriously wish to try this game out. Numerous times I have yelled at my screen watching your playing. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Scott. Um, the Savinelli Corallo di Mare, the Dunhill, and the Castello Sea Rock 55. What characteristics of each makes them as good as they are? The Dunhill is super, super, super dry. Um, has a really nice open draft hole. It's very dense feeling. It, it, it exudes quality when you hold it in your hand. Um, but it manages to suck the moisture out of anything I'm smoking in it and dry out super quickly. Um, smokes effortlessly. I don't have to worry about it going out anywhere near as much as I do with other pipes. Um, the Castello is similar in that regard. Again, like really easy draft, um, really dense, but really porous. It really sucks that moisture out. The Corral, it's the same. It's kind of the same for all of them. It's just the quality of the briar, the quality of the craftsmanship. I do not notice any particular uh, blend doing better in any particular pipe. I know a lot of people really swear by that. Like, oh, you want like a chimney stack sort of pipe for, for a certain kind of blend. You want this for this, this for that. A pot 
bowl like the one I have in my Costello um, can perhaps be a little better with certain blends than it could would be with other, but for the most part, I'll smoke anything in anything. The bowls of the Dunhill and the, and the Corallo di Mare are fairly similar, and then the Costello has a pretty wide pot. Um, so that one, I guess, because it is so wide, more of a chance of it burning unevenly because there's so much surface area in the bowl. Um, but you just, you just kind of keep up on it, keep it tamped, and then keep it lit evenly on the top. But yeah, basically all of those pipes, the quality of the briar is impeccable. And especially, you know, the Dunhill is from the 60s, so it's very old. It's had a lot of time to really season and weather. And they all stay dry. They all dry quickly. They all are effortless draft, or they have an effortless draft and just a really nice open draft hole, um, but not too wide. They're just perfect. Whenever you sip on those pipes, if they're tamped properly, they just feel perfect. And uh, I'd be hard pressed to pick one over the other, but all three of them are pretty much in the same tier. So gang, I've been going forever. It's been about half an hour and I think it is time to end this Sunday smoke. But thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in next week. Tune in this coming week on Wednesday for my long-term review of GLP's Telegraph Hill. Stay tuned to the Stuff and Things Plays channel where we will start our Red Dead Redemption series. It's an amazing game thus far, and I think you're going to like it. And tune in in general. Tune in to both channels. Subscribe. Hit that little notification bell icon. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week. But until then, until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later. Mmm.